So today we're working on a 2004 Chevy Colorado and I'm replacing the front shocks. So first thing we'll need to do is loosen this top nut right here. So the way we do this is in this case there's a Allen wrench socket on top of this and you get there through the hood way in there you can kind of see right in there. Bam. So this is a 3 16 Allen wrench, which we'll be using. And the best way to do this is have somebody help you hold the Allen wrench socket in the truck and have somebody loosen the nut with a 16 millimeter wrench. So once that's loosened up, she comes out like this. Bam. It's ideal to um, remove this cover here, but mine's stapled on from the previous owner, so not much of an option. At that point we can remove this top washer. And this And from here, we can simply get some light over here. Loosen this 18 millimeter nut. You're gonna have to put a wrench on the other side. And that's the gist of it right there. So just a little close up of how I'm doing this. With a soccer wrench, extension if you need it, and another 18 millimeter wrench on the other side. Hold both of them and just tug away. So now that we have this nut loose right here, we can just tap this with a hammer and it pops right out. So with that bolt out, this nut loosened up here, the shock just falls right out. There it is. And as we can see, it's still in pretty great condition. But this customer wanted some Belstein shocks put in, so that's why we're doing this. So, putting it in, whole process in reverse. And yeah. So, here's our brand new shock we got with all the new hardware. So, what we're going to want to do, put the washer in, concave up, put this in with nipple side up. And at this point, we want to insert it back into where it goes. There's a slot up here. So we'll do that now. So we put it in. This side was considerably easier than the left side. Um, from here, this nipple side down. And the washer concave down. From this point, we want to try to tighten the new nut just a little bit. In this case, they sent us a 17 millimeter nut. So we can try pushing this down, whatever works, just get it on there just a little bit. And from there, we'll put in the big bolt, the 18 millimeter bolt. Remember, it goes in like this, this way, and the nut on top. So we'll go ahead and do that. Just a little trick that I found to help me through this, getting this top bolt on, because there's not a lot of thread showing originally, is just put a screwdriver or something really sturdy through there, which kind of pushes this whole thing up and gives you just a little bit of thread in order to get your nut fastened. So by far the trickiest thing about this project is getting this 18 millimeter bolt back through there. So if you have somebody to help you out, 
what you do is push this up to where everything lines up nicely and have him push this bolt through. In my case, I will keep the screwdriver here, slowly kind of tug it out just a little bit and place this nut through there. And once I get it through, say halfway, I kind of tap it with a hammer just to get it through the rest of the way. So at this point, we have the nut back through and we're almost at the end here. All I gotta do is cap it off. Just wherever that nut went off to, right here. So again, same process with the wrench and the soccer wrench to tighten this back up. And so lastly, when tightening this top bolt, um, it will begin to turn. That's why we use the Allen wrench to undo this. In this case, this new shock has a slot for a monkey wrench. So we'll just try to get that up here and then tighten it. So lastly, I did do a little bit of research online, ended up finding the torque specs. So for this top bolt right here, they're saying 18 foot-pounds. And for this bottom bolt, they're saying 52 foot-pounds of torque. 